So today we're gonna be doing some legs today. Welcome to another episode. Uh, today we're gonna do a little bit different because I'm gonna focus on, we're gonna do a hamstrings, but I'm gonna be more focusing on my inner thighs. So you're gonna see some different movements that I normally don't do, which hence why I need to develop my inner thighs. And then on top of that, I'll do some of my basic movements as well. One of the basic, most basic movements that I'm gonna do is my front squat. Uh, don't really know how heavy I'm gonna get, but we try to do something, because with front squats, you kind of want to do more reps than you want to do the heavy, heavy weight, especially in my case. So let's just get started. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm going to be doing so I like to do a lot of like band warm-up things and when I say warm-up I mean just basically almost priming the muscle and the whole skeletal system as I'm getting things warmed up and ready to actually put some action into it so since I since I'm going to be focusing more on hamstrings my weakness is my hamstrings because that's I think I tore my or oh, partial tear on my left hamstring. So I take a little bit of extra time to do some mobility work at, for my warm up. All right, so let's move on to the next movement.
All right, so some pointers about when you're front squatting or some of the pointers that I use that you can use for yourself. The number one pointer that I can give you when you're front squatting as a pretty hefty or nifty trick that you could do is lowering your bar height one down. So normally when I'm regular squatting, like back squatting and stuff, I'll have it at set at like a 19 height. So when I'm front squatting, I'll set it at 18. That way the bar is way below here. Reason being, one, it's easier to set up when you get under it, really pushing it up under the chin. And then two, if let's say I am failing and stuff, or I hate saying stuff, but let's say I'm failing, I can more easily get up to that height and put it in. And since today, I'm not really gonna go for weight, I'm gonna be pushing for more reps, this will work out a little bit better. You know? And again, one of the main, main components to front squatting is keeping yourself upright and keeping the elbows high. Second that your elbows drop off, boom, the bar's gonna come out. So give those things a try. You do want to keep a good rhythm. You want to be able to uh, stick the movements and get all the blood pumping into it. You don't want to rest in between the set. Unless you call for a rest pause set, then do that. But even then, there's a certain way of doing that to get the most effectiveness out of it. Um, especially with front squatting, I don't like to pause during it. I like to be able to move efficiently through the movement. See, I just keep going, just like that. But I'm not bouncing out of it, bouncing out of it. Because I want to stick in the hole a little bit and stress the quad out as much as I possibly can. Now, with the way I'm kind of executing this movement is I'm opening up my knees, getting some glute action in there as well. This thing takes a lot, a lot out of you, especially when it's higher up. Alright, let me know what you think.
this movement at all. <laughs> uh, I guess it's a new challenge for me, uh, but I do feel a whole lot tension here and within here, which is good. I gotta be able to like get my leg a little bit straighter and try to stay more upright because I am breaking forward a little bit too much, which shows like kind of a weakness within my abs. So gotta get the abs up. So I guess we'll work on it on the next set. Let's get it. maintain a lot of uh, um, shit. took a lot of breath out of me but I said it was better I was able to maintain a lot of strength throughout my core keeping myself upright better and I think getting some more depth because I was able to feel a lot more of the eccentric or the stretch within my hamstrings or the inner thigh especially throughout the through in the soleus that runs up through the inner thigh uh, but I don't want to be in too much of a stretch position or lengthened position because I'd be too afraid to like tear anything. So I'm gonna do one more set. I'm not gonna use any weight, just keep focusing on getting reps in and really stressing the muscle out like I need to. Yeah, it's, it's a lot harder of a movement than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> Let's get it. sumos I go straight into a standing ham curl and I'm pretty much executing is I'm like kind of pushing the hip in but I kind of do a different setup on both for for each leg differently so for my right leg because I have more contraction or more um, mental connection with that ham I can easily more easily squeeze my hips uh, press into the pad and get more contraction out of my hamstring. For my left leg, I have a little less connection. So what I do is I kind of sit the hip back and kind of sit into it as if I'm doing like a, like a side chest pose where you can sit into the hamstring, uh, do that. And I've noticed that I've gotten a lot better contraction out of it, especially since that's like my slightly torn hamstring. And all these movements just take a lot out of me. I don't know why, and this is just like, Cause I'm going like back to back and I'm not taking that much time in between sets. Uh, unless I'm like filming, like when I'm doing this talking head points, then I may take like a minute, minute and a half. All the other times, it's like 45 seconds. I'm just going, just going, going, going. concentrated movement on the concentric you know the contraction through it but it does allow for a lot of load on the eccentric so what I'm doing is I'm really putting a lot of tension when I'm going down so lengthening the hamstring a lot and then when I get ready to pull myself back up that contraction with squeezing through the glute and pressing hard into this pad really gives like a real gnarly type of uh, contraction that happens in the hamstrings it's hard to explain but it's even worse to feel <laughs> yeah, this is the last movement. 
today. Uh, very unconditional way for me to attack my hamstring day, but I really liked it a lot. It gave me a really good pump. I can tell that I stressed out the muscle a lot because I'm actually like kind of shaking. So that's why I got to keep like fidgeting back and forth to keep the blood moving and stuff. But felt really good. I think I'm going to stick to this routine for the next like four, maybe eight weeks. You typically, when you ever like switch up a routine or do any different type of routine, you want to keep that routine for about eight weeks. That's where you can tell if it really is working for you or you can really fine tune it to work for you a little bit better. Uh, in this case, I think it worked out pretty good. Again, like I said, I'm gonna run it for another three weeks before I assess again if I need to change anything or modify anything. Uh, just looking back at it, I think one thing that I would probably change is I probably would add a dumbbell RDL into this. You know, maybe even single leg RDL just because you know, to be way more concentrated on some more eccentric movements, because today's workout was very eccentric loaded fa uh, focused, and I like that a lot. I think, that, I think my hamstrings respond a lot to that, so that was, that was pretty good. You know, I'm not going to lie, that was a good workout. I want to see you try it for yourself. Let me know what you think about it, and give me any pointers that you think that would help enhance the workout, or even just anything better that you guys want to see. So tomorrow we got chest, and you know I'll probably do my traditional chest workout just because I was genetically with a pretty good chest. So we'll do some chest and incorporate some arm movements. And what I do a little bit different for my chest day is I'll incorporate chest with biceps, do like antagonistic muscles together, and then we'll do back with triceps. So again, opposites of everything. And yeah, so that's it. You know, like, share, subscribe. Thank you for watching. And be on the lookout for everything, even my other social media accounts, like with Instagram, you got tflex001. Check that out. And same name, but also on TikTok. I don't post as much on TikTok just because, like, Instagram is, like, right there on my first page on my phone. And I'm, I hardly ever scroll through my phone. I barely even use my phone. In fact, I don't even know where my phone is right now. So I'm terrible at that. But check out my TikTok. Also, check out the Instagram page for TFX. Get some of the latest news that we got coming out. I am going to be dropping some videos about our expansion, which, just so you know, we're in the expanded side right now. As you can see, I got one of the frames in the back that's already put up. So we got some things moving along the lines with that, and you'll be seeing some videos pop off with that as well. So like I said, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, comment below, do all those good things there. Hit that little bell icon so that way when, you, when I post up again, you get a notification. And let's just keep this thing rolling. Let's keep it rocking, all right?